Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We'll call this meeting to order. Roll call, Jen. Shelly Fiant. Ginny Hep. Anita Matt. Present. Armand Gillen. And Janesque Fielty. Fred Matt. Here. Carol Langford. Len Tutti. Bing. Matt. Ellie Bundy. Martin Charlo. Present. Mike Dolson. I'm here. James Steele, Sr. Okay, we have a quorum present. Um, Sharmel, could you lead us in prayer this morning, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the presence of your spirit today. Thank you for the goodness that your spirit brings to us. Thank you for the covering and protection that you bring in this time of, of uh, need that many have. Pray your 
your um, covering be upon us, that you would protect this land from the fires, the, the animals, the people, that you would use it for good in the places where it is, that all things that are coming against your people would be used for good. Your word says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. I just pray that over our people today, that they would prosper in the midst of calamity and chaos. And, and um, we just thank you that you are a good, good father. Lem lem shkurunsut and kumiyatshe. Thank you, Sharmal. We have a set of minutes from July 13th. Abby, on page three, um, at the top of the page where I say LaDonna Brable Allard on the land where the Standing Rock encampment was held at. Go ahead, Charmel. Thank you. Abby, on page two, I made a comment with regard to the tribal lands discussion on Black Bear Ranch. I'd like to read Charmel discussed how leases are set up for nonprofits and that it's in the CSKT's best interest to. Um, to take care of this major maintenance issues on its own assets. Thank you. Madam Chair, motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion by Martin, second by Anita. Are there any other changes? If not, all those in favor? <coughs> okay, motion carries unanimous. <coughs> So we have an agenda today.
Um, I just had one thing on the afternoon council roles discussion. Um, after this agenda was sent out, um, Jordan informed Rick that he um, wasn't ready to provide his final presentation to council. So I'm wondering if we can reschedule this for um, another time. I don't know if he gave options, Jen, on when he was available. Brian Upton was just going to come in and give that. He said it was up to council if you guys wanted an update. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about Jordan and the council roles. Oh, that one is Rick Inez. Rick okay. Inez. And he said it was fine that he could do the council roles on another day. Okay. On the new agenda it was Rick Inez. Okay, and then um, if we wanted to, there was no action on Brian's bison range update. It's just information in the packet. So if you guys would be willing to strike those from the agenda. Okay. Did we have any additions? Oh, Madam Chair, I had, I had one issue I wanted to discuss with council this morning. Madam Chair. I know Carol had an issue. Anita? Oh, I was just gonna make the motion to approve the agenda with additions. Okay, <clears throat> are there any other additions? Okay, motion by Anita to approve the agenda with additions. Second by Charmel. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimous. Okay, it looks like we have five minutes before our first agenda item, if you wanna go ahead. Yeah, fine, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the council and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, so I just wanted to bring a, this issue up with the council again. This is, I have been um, contacted by um, a lot of community members in Elmo concerning, um, concerning the use of our, our tribal lands by, by non-members. Um, this morning, I had a brief discussion with, with August, August left hand. He informed me of a, of a business that's, that's uh, out of Big Arm that currently rents razors, and ATVs, and, and, and um, things like that. And they've been, they've been um, they make a substantial amount of money, you know, off, off of this business on, on our tribal lands, okay? And so I just wanted to bring this up again because at one time we had the discussion about a, about a, a plan for NRD to come in with a proposed budget on to increase the game warden game game warden staff and then also give us a um, proposed increase fee schedule. I I would like um, you know at this time that we. Let's put a time frame on that so we can keep keep the ball rolling on it on this because this is uh, something that uh, this is an issue that um, you know and, and and as we all know after the after the pandemic we just been swarmed with out of staters and uh, we're getting a lot of our tribal members pushed off our tribal lands. I mean I'm hearing stories about what's going on in Blue Bay, you know and. And some of this, you know, some of the story that's going on behind uh, behind the resort, where a lot of our people just just don't want to go there anymore because it's it's just too many too many people there. And you know, I think we also need to start looking at um, identifying um, specific areas uh, for non-member use, so our tribal members can start um, utilizing their custom places that they're you know that they're them and their families are used to going you know all the time so i uh, you know I, I would like us to at least um ask nrd to, to bring in a plan within the next two weeks so we can start the discussion i i, I know this is going to take a lot of planning um but we're talking you know we're talking about the use of our tribal lands and and you know being in this heat wave you know, I, I would I would really support just shutting the, shutting the woods down right now if we if that um, when that discussion came up. But anyway, I just wanted to thank August. August has brought this brought this to my attention on numerous occasions, and and I know Mar Marvin Salway. He's he's always been concerned about um, um, all of the 
um, non-members that he encounters up, up north on, on tribal lands. And, and um, in some cases, some don't even have permits, you know, so. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up and I will continue, um, continue to keep bringing this up until we get an action plan going. So Jen, can you update us on when Dan McClure is scheduled to present? Yes, I will. I'll contact him, but I know he's on travel next week. So I'll check to see if he's, oh, yeah, he's gone Tuesday and Thursday next week, unless you guys. Okay. Yeah, I'll find out. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, thank you, August, for bringing that to our attention. Um, I wasn't aware of that situation up north, but I do know um, we see the same kind of thing in the South Fork of the Jocko, just non-members. If you want to come up to the, or can you bring him a, a mic, Jim? August or you want to talk? You just stay right there, my friend. Go for it. Okay, I want to talk about uh, it was when the boys were up on north of uh, on the uh, north of Elmo there up on the hill where the uh, look all this driving through the, there was a guy uh, up there grading the roads and he stopped and he asked him what he was doing. He said, oh, we got something to haul from down below. And I think it was off the reservation someplace near the line. And they wanted to haul it up that way and get it out. They didn't, didn't say what they had or anything like that. So they're, they're using our roads and things up there. And I don't know what the heck they're, they can't, if they can't haul it off the, from where they're at and off to where they want it, they have to come up into our, Reservation to go through and all that. I don't know what the heck's going on there. They block off all the places where we used to come in a long time ago. Got all the houses there down in Elmo there, north of Elmo. Is, they're buying lands there and then they block it off and they put no trespassing on it. We can't even go up the, into where we want to go up there. Yet they got the four wheelers and running around on the reservation. So that's what I want to say. Thank you, August. I think Carol has something to add to this discussion. Yeah, Madam Chair, I got a call similar to land from Enius, uh, Gail Enius and Marvin Salloway and uh, another individual that didn't want to be named, but um, they told me about this guy named Sizzler that lives up in Big Arm and so I Googled uh, to try to find ATVs, rentals, and whatever, and I found Flathead Off-Road UTV rentals. And so I called the number in Big Arm. And, um, yeah, they do rent them, uh, 199 for a two-seater, 299 for a four-seater. And he told me there is 100 miles of roads and trails that you can ride on on the Flathead Indian Reservation. And uh, it's between Elmo and Big Arm. And he's, I asked him about fire restrictions. He said as for, he, there was none, as long as you stay on the road. Um, and his name is Sizzler. I'm not sure how to spell that. S-I-S-L-E-R is the way I spelt it. Anyway, this guy is definitely renting and um, not uh, hasn't approached us that I know of. Um, because I think these two gentlemen also talked to Tom McDonald about it. So, um, yeah, it's uh, really concerning to find out that this person actually needs a permit to operate this kind of business on the reservation. So, anyway, I think whatever we can do, and I think it needs to be immediate. I think people need to work over the weekend so we can get our gate guards back up. Um, just to slow things down. I mean, just Marie Trojan's last week or two weeks ago, her message, you know, about Twin Lakes, 
And I just think it, it's not just those two areas, it's everywhere. It's just being just, dev it's devastating to know that they're just doing whatever they want. And um, it's just because of an influx of people. So whatever we can do, Madam Chair, I would appreciate that we do it immediately and not wait two weeks if we can help it because it's just getting worse. Thank you, yes, I'll follow up. Okay, all right, thank you. So August, we will follow up with Fish and Game and um, Law and Order if we need to. So thanks for bringing that up, appreciate it. Next up, we have um, Inner Tribal Timber Council and Salish Kootenai Housing Authority appointments um, that were left vacant by Fred's departure, which Fred is la his last day is today. So those start on page two in the packet. There's a resolution appointing um, Fred as the delegate to ITC and Tony Inkachuk. Inka Shola Jr. as the alternate. So is there anyone interested in um, serving as that delegate for Intertribal Timber Council? Bing, you're interested, okay. So Bing is interested, who is anybody interested in the alternate? Madam Chair, I'd be. Okay, Anita and Lynn. Okay, you got that, Jen? Okay, so Bing is offered to be the delegate and Anita and Lynn as the alternates along with Tony Jr. Okay, make that motion. thank you. Would Go you ahead, make Charmel. A motion for that resolution? Yes, motion by Charmel. Thank you. Second by Mike. All those in favor? Okay, motion carries unanimous. The next. On page four in the packet, um, Carol Langford is the delegate to the Salish Kootenai Housing Authority and Fred was the alternate. So we need an alternate for the Housing Authority Board. Charmel? Madam Chair, I was just looking toward Ellie. I know you used to serve on that board. Are you interested in that? Okay. Okay, so I don't see a resolution in the packet. Is it just a letter? Yes. Okay, so all those in favor? Okay, motion carries unanimous. Thank you guys for volunteering. Okay, next up we have Ed Meese, city manager of Polson. You can come up to the mic here. <clears throat> Good morning, gentlemen. What's that? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. I'm going to say that in um, 30 years in local government, this is the most impressive council chamber I've ever sat in. So congratulations, this is beautiful. And I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. So as you all know, I, I came to the city of Polson in October and this is my first opportunity to get here in person. So I'm just excited about the opportunity and thank you again for having us this morning. We won't take up much of your valuable time, um, but there were a couple couple items that I wanted to, to come this morning and just talk with you about real quick. One. I wanted to introduce to you uh, Juan Escano. Juan is our new community development director. Uh, formerly, uh, that position at the city was, was referred to as the city planner, and it still is. That's still part of what Juan does, but also there are some new additional duties 
um, that really have to do with uh, community relationships and economic development and other pieces like that. So Juan comes to us from Miami. Uh, he hasn't been through a Montana winter yet, so we're hoping that we'll still have him say this time next year. Uh, but I, I think we will, and we're excited to have him on board as, as a member of the team. And then I would just also say thank you uh, to the council and to your staff, because the last eight months have just I've just really enjoyed the opportunity to get to know some of you and, and your excellent staff. We're, I think, really starting to build some good relationships and, and some partnerships and got to meet some new folks, even at the, um, the service summit that we had a couple of weeks ago and just uh, really enjoyed, enjoyed that opportunity. So two things that I would uh, like to bring to you this morning real quick, and then I'm just going to ask Juan to say, something real quick. Um, one, we are sort of, well, not sort of, we are revitalizing one of our advisory committees to the city commission. Uh, it's what we call our economic development council. And they do a lot of different types of projects for our city commission. M main role is to be exactly that, an advisory group on different kinds of economic development issues. Probably the first one, when we get them reconstituted, we'll be dealing with uh, workforce, some local workforce uh, difficulties. I know you all are probably struggling with the same things that we are as an organization. Uh, so we, I would like to ask the council if you would consider appointing uh, a member to that group. We, we would enjoy having uh, a member from the tribe come and be part of that commission. I, I don't think it's gonna be something that's gonna be uh, overly burdensome. I would say you're probably looking at a meeting a month, uh, maybe an hour or something like that for, and just have to let that body kind of see how they develop out. So that would be one request. And then the second request is uh, in response to the initiative that was passed last November, now that we're through the state legislature, uh, the city is putting together a short-term advisory com committee uh, committee, task force, blue ribbon panel, whatever we want to call it, uh, to, have a, to have a look at what the city could do and should do in regard to recreational marijuana. And so we don't have a lot of uh, wiggle room, but we have some wiggle room. And we would like to, so we're getting this group together to provide a variety of perspectives on that issue to the city commission. Um, it's certainly your all's prerogative. I, I realize that, but I think we would come with a very specific request. Um, I know that through the COVID meetings and through some other conversations, we have um, we've worked with Chelsea. Is that the, in the tribal health? And if if it would fit, not to be uh, presumptuous, we would certainly like the opportunity to ask her to sit in on that group uh, with us and bring sort of that perspective to the conversation. And if there's others that you'd like to have, it's not a, it's not a limited number in that sense. Um, so those would be our two requests and, and, and you all can deal with those in the timing and the convenience that's best for you. But I did wanna take this opportunity to come down and meet in person and, uh, and offer those up and say again, thank you for the relationships that we're, that we're starting to build. I really really enjoy it. So that being said, I've told Juan he can have 60 seconds and and we'll hold him to that. So Juan, do you want to take a few minutes? Yes, indeed. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you turn on your microphone, please? Yeah. And Ed, if you could turn yours off, then it doesn't reverberate. Thank you. Good morning, uh, honorable uh, chair, Madam Chair and uh, council members. I really do appreciate this opportunity to chat with you and introduce myself and tell you a little bit of what we're doing and our methodology and our thoughts behind these objectives. So we could be on the same page or at least attempt to be on that and we could perhaps learn from each other how to be able to do it better uh, for, for all of us. Uh, again, my name is Juan Escano. I come from Miami. I have 20 years in uh, development and 10 years in public service. Uh, my family is a military family and our, our business or our trade is public service. Uh, so most of my family is involved in uh, uh, 
anything from uh, district attorneys to to uh, serving the public. Um, we are involved right now in launching several uh, projects that deal and address uh, our housing crisis because indeed we have one and it's causing homelessness, it's causing people to live out of cars and that is unacceptable, uh, unacceptable to us as, as uh, people that care. Um, so therefore we've developed techniques and strategies where we are now looking at a, a, a fast but high quality way uh, which deals with uh, prefab housing. We're gonna be exploring those possibilities, visiting those different factories in the United States to select and pre-approve the top manufacturers. So we bring here the best quality. Aside from that, the other side of that issue is of course, how do we build it? How do we install it? And that's the creation of jobs and via training of our local population uh, through the colleges and other sources, uh, including the uh, contractors so they can mentor these, uh, these uh, valuable uh, uh, resources, human resources to be available locally for us to build faster, uh, of higher quality and of, with less cost. And so towards those ends, those are some of the things that we are working on. But our overall philosophy is to, as we develop and uh, uh, build our city, is to be respectful uh, of the land, uh, meaning that we're not out to sprawl, we're out to build a compact. So therefore we have the land available for future generations to make their own decisions and develop as they see fit. So that's generally the overall of our objectives and uh, what we are, are attempting to do over at the city of Polson. Thank you again. Thank you. So I just, I would add just one thing to what Juan is saying. We're gonna, on, we're gonna uncork about six or seven of those exploratory proposals next week with the city commission. And um, as we get that final document ready, I'll make sure that you all have a copy of it. And if there's any of those that you'd like to ask questions about or ways that we could partner in any of that, we would certainly be glad to do that. And I think we've also been invited to participate in a, a housing survey partnership. With, is that right? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, we are in conversation or dialogue with uh, Judy Perez. Yes, and uh, she's been a tremendous uh, help to us uh, as far as uh, focusing our efforts. In fact, the suggestions were, was brought up that we should uh, uh, combine our efforts to save dollars in a study of, of actually understanding what are the core issues of why do we have a housing crisis? And so that means that we're going to uh, undertake probably the most extensive and uh, large scale understanding of this, uh, of this issue in our region. So that is gonna give us a lot of data and a lot of insights. Again, thank you all very much. And if there's any questions, we'll certainly take them, but we don't wanna to consume too much of your valuable time. So appreciate it. You're fine. Well, thank you for that information. Um, we just passed several resolutions Tuesday and one of them was homelessness. And um, we council also attended a webinar um, with three different models throughout Indian country. Um, one was a tiny home project, one was um, a net zero, um, net positive project, and then the other one was, um, I think it was based out of Rapid City, and it was dealing with the homelessness directly, like providing direct services. And an interesting, um, thing that I took out of that particular project was they referred to them as our unhoused relatives mm -hmm. instead of homeless mm -hmm. people. And I just felt like that just really made it more personal and more um, connected. So that is one of our um, top priorities. And um, I did hear Jody mention that housing survey at the Ronan chamber meeting and you know reaching out to other individuals to to participate as well. Carol did you want to add something? Yeah I just wanted to ask a question on the marijuana uh, 
task force? Who's who's all involved in that? I mean, I guess the question really is, do you have mental health people involved in, included in on the task force and are they tribal? I mean, I guess mental health is mental health. It doesn't need to be tribal, but I just wanna make sure there's a tribal perspective on the impacts to our, our people. So I would say, um, I'll give you my classic bureaucrat answer, yes and no. Um, yes, we do have some mental health representation on the task force. Um, that and that, But to the second part of your question, that's why I would like to have some additional tribal members to provide those additional perspectives, whether it's mental health or cultural or economic, whatever it is that you all would like to bring to that conversation. So we have members of uh, the city commission. We have some local business folks on there. We have a few law enforcement. I'm actually uh, going to have a few. Um, what word would I use? Uh, industry uh, representatives, um, and 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 then some uh, uh, the uh, some of the folks from the treatment court. So just trying okay. to get a good broad perspective so that we don't like start out with one particular bias. Um, but yes, that, that's exactly the kind of thing we would benefit from. Good. I was going to mention Judge Manley, but it sounds like you got somebody like Don Roberts or any of those yeah. other coordinators that, in yes. there. Yeah, because I, I think that's critical that you hear from them because it's, yeah, it impacts, I mean, every every walks of life and every way in, of life if you use marijuana and you're caught. And so I'm, thank you, thank you for doing this. And yeah, Jody had, had mentioned that she had called and uh, was including all the um, municipalities to participate in this planning process for housing. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good plan, but she's actually doing it for some money that we're receiving. So she needs to get it done fairly quickly so we can start. Uh, utilizing the fund. So thank you for participating yeah. in that. No, we look forward to it. Thank you. Okay, so um, back to your first request um, for a tribal representative to serve on our Economic Development Council. I'm wondering if Sharmel is interested being the Polson representative. Great. Madam Chair, thank you. Yes, I was going to ask if I could be um, included or appointed on um, behalf of the tribe and the Polson residents, the tribal members, I really appreciate that. This is an important um, matter to us. And, you know, we've recently been talking about jobs and, and job creation and businesses and economic um, development, things that, you know, we just really want to, to partner with whom we can. So I appreciate your initiative and uh, look forward to participating. Good Thank you. Okay. And I, um, I'm i thinking you'll keep Velda in the loop, the communication loop as, as well. Okay. So thank you for volunteering. And then the second um, ad hoc committee regarding the implementation of recreational marijuana. So as a council, we've been um, hearing from different stakeholders, law enforcement, um, different parts of our justice system, the prosecutors, the defenders, um, and economic development. And we're looking at it from a regulatory. We're kind of, um, I would say, we're kind of in a holding pattern waiting to see what, what goes on. Um, yesterday, there was a breaking news with um, Chuck Schumer's proposed um, decriminalizing marijuana at the federal level. And that's always been the, um, I guess, stopping point for us because it affects our um, housing uh, grant monies. So um, I think there's just a lot of interesting developments. So while I would support Chelsea Kleinmeyer um, as a tribal health representative. I would also hope that we would have a tribal member representative. Be great. And um, I guess we can reach out to Carol. Go ahead, Carol. I was going to suggest maybe Ann Sherwood because she has all of those facets within her program of mental health and all of that. So she might be able to offer up her mental health person that deals with that also. Okay, we can reach out to 
to our staff and and, and others and see um, who we can get assigned to that. If okay. you just keep us in the loop as to when you're um, convening your first meeting. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you all very much. Yep. It's nice to meet you, Juan. Okay, next up we have Lynn Woodfields. Um, her information is on page six in the packet. And this is an update on the Perma Red TV series. Um, Carol, if you wanna go ahead with your second issue. Yeah, and I got a third issue, no. <laughs> uh, I got a call from Tony Mitchell and she was just inquiring why why the letter went out um, to all the membership without it being signed and um, suggesting that if people didn't need the money to send it back. She was just curious of why that went out. And I told her it's possibly that it was in the law that you, you need to make recommendations. I just wasn't sure. So um, she would hope in the future that anything that goes out to the, you know, to the membership that it would be signed by you know, somebody in charge. I mean, and I thought maybe Rick should have signed it because it was basically, you know, from from his area, so. Yeah, I'm not sure of the background behind that letter. I was surprised as everyone else to receive that. So I'm not sure what the um, impetus, or inspiration for that letter was. So and yeah, I, you can follow up on that. And in, in the future, I would hope that this council, that something that is sent out to the membership gets to review and to approve it. And even when there's corrections, they need to bring it back and make sure it's final when we when we send it out. Because, uh, yeah, I just, and I, I, Tony wasn't the only one that called me on that. And then the other concern I had was when I got my ballot, the, the cover letter was a little bit blurry and I had to kind of adjust my glass. Do I have my glasses on? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think making sure that that cover letter is clear. But I, but I appreciated receiving the ballot and all of that. So, yeah, it was nice. It was refreshing. Okay, just a reminder that our primary election is June, July 31st. And the polls will be open eight to eight. And if you haven't applied for an absentee ballot, um, I'm not sure if that's still an option. It is, okay. Did you have anything to add as the election committee? No, okay. Okay, so early primary this year. July 31st. Okay, thank you, Carol. We'll follow up on those items. And Jen, you said we have a Perma Red representative? Okay. Okay. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, everybody. Thanks again for letting us join the Tribal Council. I really appreciate it. And um, just wanted to make sure we're staying in touch about what's happening and communicating. Um, we, uh, last time we met, you met Winona Wilms, who's writing the script. She worked intensely with Johnny R. Lee and Deborah Magpie Erling and has written two scripts for the network. And I just wanted to let you know that the executives um, are presenting it to the CEO any day now to see if they're going to green light it for a six to eight part series. I will for sure let you know if anything changes or as soon as we know if they're gonna agree, but uh, that's where we are on the project, which could be pretty exciting, a little overdue in my opinion. But. So Lynn, what network are you working with? Well, is this public? I, okay, I will uh, let you all know in a different, we can't technically say yet because they haven't green lighted, but I will tell you it's, um, it's a major network. And it'd be the first. That it's going to All right. Thank you. 
yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let you know as soon as they sign off. Um, and actually I'll let you all know first. So, um, and then with that vein in mind, um, on a different note, we are working really hard to make film an industry in the state of Montana for Montanans. Uh, you know, it's a nice industry away from extraction. Um, so we have just won uh, two grants for the state of Montana to start doing some training uh, specifically around film. And we will be doing this August 12th through the 15th and wanted to invite any of you or anybody you think that might be a good fit to come and do this class. It's two days of training and they will get a micro certificate in production assistant and we will try to hire them right afterwards. And the great thing about it is it's two days of training and then two days on a set. And um, I have Misty here who is gonna be doing one of the films. Both films are indigenous and one is a narrative and the other one is a documentary. We're working with April, Steven, Erica, and I wanna say, um, who else is there? And Gary to tell the story of the group home that they started. So um, we're going to do a documentary with them. And then um, I don't know, Misty, if you want to just tell them a little bit about your film. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Misty. I'm from the Shoalwater Bay tribe of Indians. I'm working on a pitch package for a feature film that we are hoping to film in Montana. Um, and I hope you can hear me OK, because the air conditioner is on behind me, but it's been really hot. Um, but this, this film is a post-apocalyptic narrative perhaps in the vein of Lord of the Rings and it does star all Native American talent in the lead roles um, so it's it's pretty exciting and I'm I'm excited to come and work in Montana I've been working with Johnny R. Lee as well as Jesse Isidore to get aspects of the script um, the theatrical trailer translated into Salish as well so if you know anybody, we have limited participation because it's a pilot program. We have about 15 openings. Um, I do know of four people on the Salish reservation, including April Charlo, who's going to take the class. If you have anybody, um, I'm happy to send you my email or send it maybe to Jennifer and um, would love to have participation. Okay, Charmel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Lynn, are there any prequels that would be required or helpful for any person interested? There are not. The only thing that we are looking for are people who maybe really want to get hired. So we're, we're considering this a pilot program for getting hired. Um, I have a television series that's getting pitched around culinary medicine, and it's a nine-week series. Whoever takes this PA class, I'd like to hire them onto it, um, you know, truly trying to make it a, a good job creation. So it's really anybody. I will say the one requirement is 18 and over. We're not doing students, right? Youth. Uh, that may change in the future, but we're trying to start doing these once a month and um, really train people in everything from hair and makeup to working on cameras. But this one is a production assistant. So it's a, you know, it's kind of the person who helps unload everything, but it's a good way to see how film works and anyone would qualify, anyone. And I really am inviting um, you know, we have limited participation up to 15 people, and I think we have seven or eight already signed up. Could you send Jennifer the specifics in an email so that we could share it? Yes, I'd be happy to. I'll send my email and then I'll send the registration form. Okay. And then the instructors, the word are, thank you. The instructors are from all over Montana and a few from like, um, Apple and, um, are going to come and teach too. So. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I think uh, Montana could use a, a, a job creation that's not extraction, that's storytelling based, which would be pretty cool. Exactly. Well, thank you for the update and we look forward to your email about the details and we'll definitely recruit and get the word out for you. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for your time. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let's take a quick break before the TAPO discussion with John Carter at 10. So we'll take a 10 minute break.
We will call the meeting back to order. It looks like John and Rhonda are with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? We are good. Did you want executive for this discussion? Please. Okay, we'll go out of regular into executive. If you can just hold on a sec, John. Certainly. Hey, Rhonda. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Rhonda. Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay. Good morning, all. And uh, it's been a while since we've talked about this. When last we talked, I sort of introduced the issue of updating TAPO and bringing it into uh, practical reality. Um, as you recall, TAPO serves three basic functions, uh, the development of regulations, the adjudication of contested cases under those regulations or other agency actions, and also sort of a Freedom of Information Act equivalency. The regulatory structure and the contested case stuff has been used well over the years. To my Can knowledge- Can you hold on a sec, John? Certainly. <clears throat> 